everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining me for this presentation on strategies that work, science and technology. We're going to have a lot of fun as we explore different resources. And I'm going to start with one of my favorite groups of middle school kids, and it's the sugar, sugarkills.us. They started blogging four years ago, and they won't stop. They keep blogging with a mission to educate tweens about sugar and too much sugar. And they don't get a grade, but they just keep on writing because they feel like they have an, an audience. And guess what? They do. This is their cluster map. A cluster map shows where in the world people are coming to your website from. And they're very excited. This is an older one. They actually get a lot more activity now. And it's fascinating. They they actually track me because I like to talk about them and they always wonder where are you we think in the end they guess and his teacher sends me a text are you in Texas today it's very it's a, it's a lot of fun um, they've been featured in all different things and they call us the sugar kills us gang and they are continuing strong and they came up with this gra graphic that's what I want to kind of direct your attention to on the left is um, how many grams of sugar all of us should have per day. And then what they do is they go and, and take foods that most teens would eat, like a Twix bar, and they compare to what you should have to what the Twix bar has. And I love it was the first registered sugar offender. I'm not kidding you. When I did this screenshot, I actually was eating a mini Twix bar. Ha! I put it down. It was a mini one. I put it down. And then they started to look at the food that was in their lunches. And they would come to uh, Bill's room during lunch to do their blog. They got very serious. And I thought Bill was making this up for years and years and years. But no, they had a mission to connect beyond the walls of the classroom. And that map of where people were coming to was very motivating for these kids. And they had people um, that were not very nice to them. And they handled it. They learned some great life, life skills. The beginning group is already over in high school, and the, um, the younger kids are taking it over. It's pretty cool. And um, this is continuing on. So here's four years later. Now they're picking on um, poor Bill's parenting. He made a mistake. His daughter's in second grade. He gave her a Hershey's bar. And as you can see, that was not a good thing to give the daughter because it had 24 grams of sugar. Well, I love that, you know, the, the um, middle school kids are parenting poor Bill's daughter. But I did, from that, I, f I found a really cool site that they linked me to. I did not know about Calorie King. That can basically, you put in almost any food and it will tell you how many calories. Maybe we don't want to know, but it will tell you. So that was new learning for me. This is an update of their cluster map. And they, uh, this just gives you an idea where everything comes. This is one piece of their information, just one. They have statistics, what time of day. They have what language people speak, what kind of um, uh, devices they're coming in from. And where in the world are they? That's why they always, they always try to figure out where I am, which I think is funny. So now that you're all watching this, I wonder if he's going to know if we all pop up in Illinois or something. It'll, it'll be interesting. We're being tracked by middle schoolers. <laughs> all right. They also have a club, a Kiva club. And I've learned a lot about this club through Bill and his students. And what they've done is they've done a variety of fundraisers. They're in a very low income area. And they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of donors giving them money. But in Kiva, you can loan $20, $25 to somebody in another part of the world for a project they, they put on Kiva. Kiva, the organization, is kind of checking out these people. But you are risking $25 to give that to them. But they have, they have they research, they um, dig, they think about it, they debate, and they have loaned money. They've... I forget how many loans they've made, hundreds, hundreds of loans. And I think they've only not been repaid on a couple of them. But it, they've, they're, they've built wells in parts of the world. They've done all these different things by donating a very small amount of money. But Bill, like me, feels very, very, it's very important to connect beyond the walls of the classroom, especially if you're a science teacher. We have to bring the experts in and we have to get your students to be the experts out. 
And so the uh, Kiva, they do, you know, different, you can focus on different areas, whatever your, your group is interested. Bill likes to give the autonomy to the groups to pick and in the research, they compare and they contrast and they have to come back to the group and say why they selected that loan. And then when it, do, if it doesn't get repaid, it, it's, it, it, they try to analyze that also. He wanted to do a new project this year, and this one I'm still trying to get my arms around. It's a voice company that brings speaking machines to life. So, the best I know, it's a volunteer project. That if you volunteer, they give you script after script after script, and you read. And what it's doing, what the technology behind this is doing, is it is building a voice. So they would be, for me, they would be building an old Midwestern lady's voice. But if your students do it, did it, they might be building a, a, a voice that has an accent closer to what that student hears every day. So they're basically building voices for students that can't speak, that use devices. But what they're finding is, you know how like Siri and, and our GPSs all have like the same voices? This company is trying to personalize the voice more toward that student, their age, their um, their accent, and I'm just I'm studying this. I'm really interested in this. Found a lot of things as I was wandering around trying to collect the best resources for you. I found a ton of apps, free apps like this one is um, an area an area calculator. This is another one. There's apps for almost everything. So. If you need something, just put in calculator and what you're looking for, my guess is you're going to find it. But Photomath, I'm sure you already know about this because your students for sure do. What it is, is you, they take out, they, they get the app, free, take out their phone, snap a picture of a problem in a book or a problem they've handwritten, and it solves the problem for them step by step and gives them the answer. Hello, it's out there right now. You need to know about it. Photo math. There, go ahead, download it on Android or <laughs> um, your Apple. Now, this one is something as a science teacher, you really should spend some time digging around. This is a computational search engine. Anything that can be computed, um, you can put it in. So, for example, let's go back to that Hershey bar. We could put in the Hershey bar and it would have told us the calories. I knew that, but I didn't know about that other website. There's so much more than that. And they have all these like units that are broken down. You see across the bottom and there's apps and there's, there's all different things. They're really, really trying to uh, get computation in the hands of everybody, which is, I think, very interesting based at um, U of I. Flickr, I just, old friend, just wanted to uh, reintroduce you to Flickr. Flickr is one of the largest databases of images out there. Most of them you can use for free. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, and then I also want to point out Google Earth. Google Earth cannot be put on uh, Google uh, Chromebooks. It, it's too big. It, Google Earth is one that you can really just one run one on maybe the teacher machine. But I wanted to point out three magic letters. K-M-Z. It stands for, you don't care, Keyhole Markup Zip. But what you can do is in Google search engine, not in Google Earth, you can go ahead and search for these little KMZ files. What this is, so I put in a topic that you might study, erosion, and then KMZ. And if somebody has already created like a tour around the world to show different types of erosion, that would show up in the search. I can click on it, it would open up Google Earth, and I can use somebody's like guided field trip around the globe. It's pretty cool. I hope you're using Google Classroom. Google Classroom is um, free, and it's a way to organize your classrooms. You might already have something else. You might have Edmodo, uh, Schoology, Haiku. Um, oh, there's so many more. But Google Classroom is a really good document manager. It helps organize the mess that Google Docs very quickly becomes. And it's, um, it's quite, they've added some nice features. At the beginning, oh, it was a little clunky, but it's much better now. Another thing I was thinking about science is sometimes you just need a visual and drawing some a cell on the board. Maybe you're not an artist. So the um, I just wanted to, uh, some keywords for you to search, whatever you're looking for, like a cell, um, animation, simulation, 
3D. Those are some search terms that might get you to what you need. Oh, there it is again. And I pulled so many of these resources that I'm sharing with you today right off the Twitter stream. On the far right, you can see Sci Chat, Science Chat. These people are busy and just sharing great resources all day. I was really excited because really I found a lot of these resources there. A lot I already knew, but a lot kind of reminded me of that. This Science Daily, this was new to me. Um, latest research. I thought this would be a great way to bring in nonfiction into the science classroom, as well as some of the reading strategies. And so you need text, and you want interesting text. And I thought, here's a little shot of, of text every single day. So it might be a great resource for you to put up on the board as students come in, and you could spend one minute, two minutes, doing some reading strategies as well as science. Wonderopolis, I forgot about it. This one is just a classic for I wonder. And then the answers as, as you go ahead and do that. So what's the difference between a crocodile and alligator? There it is. It's What I like about Wonderopolis is it's short shots of information, but they also will take you deeper if you're interested in learning more. I love gizmos. Unfortunately, gizmos are not free. But some of your science books are tied to gizmos, so that's kind of why I included it in, in here. Gizmos are super high quality simulations that you can interact with. And they cover all different areas of science, very strong in the area of science. And so um, they're excellent. Unfortunately, they're not free. But they may be worth it if you can hook students and get them to understand concepts. Um, it just This is the one about computer science. I just wanted to include this, and um, I think it was interesting um, that there's a lot more talk about con um, computer science. Vocabulary, vocabularies and everything. So I found this article about teaching science, uh, teaching vocabulary in science. So I thought there might be some strategies that you could use in there. Ooh, now that I'm looking at this again, I see pricing in the upper right-hand corner. That makes me nervous. I always hate that. Um, of course, uh, Twitter, I found this, and it was interesting. They, they did a Skype virtual field trip with a ranger. How cool is that? With budgets being slashed, field trips are being slashed. Now maybe we can go ahead and kind of have a virtual field trip. Pretty cool from Yosemite. Uh, new to me. Again, this is off Twitter. And um, I enjoyed kind of digging around in this one. And... Um, <clears throat> From, this is the NGSS project, but it really, compared to NGSS website, this had a really fresh new feel. I really liked it. And now I'm jumping over to the Smithsonian, and they have a whole series of videos that I didn't know. They're short, fun series, and I won't say there's a ton of them, but again, a great way to launch a lesson or to kind of break up a lesson. So I thought that was that was a big find. Again, I got that off Twitter. And this was new to me also. Ambitious science teaching. There's, um, it looks like a really interesting project. As far as I could tell, everything was free. And they have a very robust video gallery. And um, people are liking them, sharing them. And that's how I found it there. Now I'm going to maybe upset some of you. But really... Think how many hours students were working on those projects in their families. Maybe it was worth it, but I, we really have to rethink some of the projects that we're asking students to do. At my house, when my boys were in middle school, I was sprung by the make a model of the cell, you know, Sunday night at 7 o'clock. You know, and I didn't have the gummy worms and I didn't have the, the things I needed. So maybe think about the population that you serve and think about... Who's doing this project? Did mom do this? What are we learning? So we have to really think through that. So if I upset you, I apologize. A lot of games. I found a lot of games through that Twitter feed. And some of them are good, and some of them I thought, are we just wasting time? What's the purpose of this? This one was interesting. This is a teacher. This is their website. And it looks like a high school teacher that's teaching Bio 1, Bio 2, Bio 4. But 
I liked it as a kind of a model of what maybe you want to build. You, you might be able to pick some of the resources off this person's, but maybe you want to build it. And it gave me the opportunity to bring up the nice changes that they've made in Google Sites. Finally, Google Sites is actually easy to use and it integrates really well if you're already a Google school. So you might want to think about something um, like that, building your resources on a Google site. And back to my Twitter, okay, I won't say anything more about it, but you do need to join us on, on there. And the best way, if you do jump on Twitter and you say, I'm going to go do this, start following the people that do the science chat. Just click on their name and then follow and start to see if you, like me, don't get great quality information. It is really worth your time. Now, formative assessment in science class. Remember, formative is just quick as you're learning checks. This one is a quick as you're learning. It's really um, very few features, but I like it's kind of like the old Jeopardy game that we used to make. But, you know, you'd say Disney movies for 100. There's the question. And then the answer pops up just like that. I like it for the simplicity, the quick. How do we do, you know, we, I can just go ahead and put the questions in and go. Or better yet, have the students put the questions in and go. Go formative. This is, I think, one of my favorites right now because you can draw. So it, once you, the teacher sets up the class and, you know, draw that cell or draw the whatever they're doing there. And on the teacher dashboard side, I can see exactly in real time every student as they're working. It really, I, then I know exactly who's on task and who isn't. I think you all know Kahoot by now, the screaming, the cheering. <laughs> I heard yesterday that there's new music in Kahoot. I was pretty excited about that, personally. And the last one in the formative assessment section here is Plickers. Plickers is pretty low tech. All you need is one device to scan the class, and each student has their own Plicker if you'd imagine, and you hold it up in the teacher's device, it's grading basically and immediately checking, and you have that data in your hand. They got it. I can move on, or I better restart my lesson for tomorrow. So Plickers takes a little practice, but it's a low-tech way to gather a lot of information very quickly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I threw a lot at you, but just a reminder, I also have included every one of those resources so you have those in your resource pack. And of course, there's my email. If you have any questions, or better yet, we'll go send questions, no problem. But you might have some great resources that we want to share for our next one. Thank you.